At number five, we have Louisville and Michigan from 2013. It was hard to pick a game for the fifth spot as there were a lot of games that were close but not too close. Butler UConn finished 53-41 in possibly the worst championship game ever played, so that was out. The best counter argument for this game is probably Duke Wisconsin, but I would rather be able to joke about this title not actually counting for Louisville than reward Duke. So here we go with the game. In this game, we get an incredible first half heat check from Spike Albrecht. Mr. Hardaway on the run. Here's Albrecht. Got another one. Are you sweet? Burke thought about a long three. Albrecht will take one. And got another one. Oh, I'm going to beat you with speed. Even though right there, he goes down the way. Oh, he just, oh. he just. Albrecht, pull up jumper. Man. I tell they were really down and out. Made some big shots. And there was only one thing to do after a performance like that, and that was to tweet at Kate Upton after the game. The ultimate heat check. Unfortunately for Michigan, Louisville had an answer with a Luke Hancock key check of their own. Number 240 remaining. It's a 10 point game. Hancock will try another triple over McGarry. Got it! And the rebound of these Seabers. One thing about Louisville, they don't go away. They keep coming at you, at you, at you. Hancock way downtown. Wow, he shot that from Mariota. Mariota. And a look, but Levert got out on it quickly. He used that ball fake really well. Now he takes it and got it. At the end of the day, this game was all about the heart of Peyton Siva and the Louisville team to pull through and win the game for Kevin Ware, who had suffered that gruesome injury earlier in the tournament. This really was a nice moment until it was all taken away because of Rick Pitino and his strippers, or his payment of recruits, or something like that. I don't know, this guy had so many scandals, it's hard to keep track of. Hancock oh, finds a watch. wide open Smith for three, got it. I'd give him a screen and let him go right at him. Burke for three, got it. Small play, small play. The Hardaway trying to oh, see the back door. What a pass by him. Jang in low, a hook shot, a long oh, sweeping right. hooking from Jang. McGarry with four fouls, Hancock three, got it. Burke again, wrap around underneath for two. Final chances for Michigan. They're running out of time, two possession game. Burke, long, long three, just hits the net and nothing else. And that's just about gonna do it. It's over. And now the Louisville fans are up at the Georgia Dome because they know it. The hand in to Smith, the Cardinals. All he can do is add to what the lead is right now, and it's not going to happen. And the Louisville Cardinals are the 75th NCAA college basketball champions. And Rick Pitino, with the fireworks and confetti, has won his second national title, first in Kentucky, and now at the first man ever to do it. At at number four, we have Gonzaga and UNC. This game was a treat because it was honestly the two best teams in the country, which isn't always the case in the national championship. This game was pretty sloppy, but fun nonetheless. On the rewatch, I was very impressed with Zach Collins for Gonzaga. Karnowski was the memorable player and starter of the team, but Collins probably should have been getting a lot more of his minutes. The real story of this game is the redemption of UNC, coming back from the most heartbreaking loss possible to win the next year. I was watching this game on Franklin Street, and while I'm not a UNC guy, being a part of the tension and the highs and lows with every basket was wild. I'll never forget being a part of the championship mob Tilly, in Chapel Hill. Look at this, I love it. Tilly on what the floor, Karnowski at last. And that was hard effort by Tilly that made it happen. And Barry to Hicks, and one. We're gonna give this to Karnowski, or? Empty side, Williams, short. Thanks, oh. Miss Me. How about... Oh, William tough shot. Goss. Whoa! Oh. Woo. Williams collided on him. No call. Barry with a three. How about Look this kid? Nice experts. He loves to post up when they need a big basket. How about this? Little kiss. He back to win. Banked it home. Created a separation. Nice cut by Jackson. Oh. And foul. And Williams. Hicks. One in the drive on Williams. Puts it up. That? Oh, wow. That's what you need from that guy. Big time. Goss. Comes in. Blocked yeah. by Meeks. 
Bury Run up out. ahead to Jackson, and he dunks it down for the five-point lead. Matthews off the mark, and this year the confetti is going to fall for North Carolina. They're not going to be denied this time. Number three is the Duke Butler game in 2010. This game holds a special place in my heart as I was in seventh grade and got to go to this game with my dad. We had such a fun time the entire Final Four weekend and I'll never forget it. This game was the end of the Cinderella run for Gordon Hayward and Butler that would not have happened if Georgetown hadn't injured Arenze and Owaku in the Big East tournament. Still, it's hard not to love this Butler team, especially playing against this list of hateable all-stars in Kyle Singler, John Shire, two Plumleys, Zubek, and Nolan Smith. Ugh. It was a back and forth contest that led to the historic almost half court shot by Gordon Hayward. I still remember everyone in the arena being so shocked at how close this shot was that it took us all a few seconds to realize that Duke had actually won the game. Gross. Plumlee got it away in time, and it's tipped up and in by John Shire. He's the only guy that's actually. Singler step back three. Again, they beat him on the inbounds pass. Shire. And it's Mack. The biggest lead of this game, either side, was six by Duke. Mack. Cuts it down to Singler. He's been dancing all night. Yes, he and has. making sweet middle. They missed the last six. Yeah, they can't get it done all the way if they don't make a bucket. That was a block by Shire. Hayward behind the back, gives it up to Howard, and it bounces in. You don't need it now, though. It doesn't have to be a three now. Just get a good shot. That's a good shot right there. Howard again on the inside. Hits down the wall. And maybe screening and catching the pass. Well, there it is, out to Hayward. Singward defending. Ten seconds to go. He wants to drive behind the back. On the baseline. Fade away shot. Off the rim. I so wish... Gordon Hayward's shot had gone in as we could have had an all-time coaching mistake by Coach K telling Zubek to miss the free throws up two. To quote that evil little curmudgeon, I didn't gamble. I took a risk. I would hope that Zubek makes this. Not going to try. It's Hayward pulling it down. Getting around Zubek at midcourt. Launches the shot. Oh, and almost went in. Almost went in and Duke is the king of the dance, 2010. Number two is Virginia and Texas Tech. I swear every Virginia game from this tournament was a thrill. Of course regulation wasn't enough for the national championship. On Texas Tech's side, no one really believed this team could make it this far despite being a three seed because, you know, Texas Tech. But Chris Beard is a hell of a coach and he coached these boys up and they were tremendous to root for. This game kept having Virginia get up and Texas Tech claw back, leading to the high intensity last few minutes where Virginia again pulled the rabbit out of the hat. Well, the wiggle right around Culver, feed it back outside. Baseliner guy drops. Oh, you can't. A offensive mind. Tough shot. Edwards. And he gets the from that post area. He Which does. Over to Hunter. Got yeah. another one. Owens forgot. He does. Back to Jerome with two. One to shoot. Fade away. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> he likes those. You ready? Over to Rowe. And again, that bench. Over with the dish. Odiasse! And one! He can tie it at the line. They are sensational with their interior passing. Got to give him room to go. Look They're so it. right. Takes the jumper. Hits the oh. jumper! Oh. Big time! Driving. Shut off. Nice Bounce cut. pass. God! Oh, oh. Right there either by God. <laughs> good assist by Key. Moretti. Oh. <laughs> Ten to shoot. Step back shot. Tapped around. Guy has it. Jump ball. Up. Jump ball. The arrow belongs to Texas Tech. They call the jump ball. Out to the star, the Big 12 player of the year. On the ACC's top defender. In the paint. Puts it up oh. for the lead. Um. 
Unbelievable use of the left by Jerome. Jerome driving. Jerome floater off the glass. No! Rebounded by Texas Tech. See This kid got to go fast. Jerome gives it up. Far side. Hunter oh, hits the three to tie it. Oh, what? oh my goodness! With 12 seconds remaining, Hunter continues with his great play in the second half. Knocks down that corner three. And what, what, what happens a lot? Great defense sometimes over helps. A good reaction is in the dribble. You're looking to help your partner out, but a wide open knockdown jumper. Eight seconds, they're going to play it out. Culver pulls up three, off the mark, rebound, Hunter. They look for a timeout. They look for a timeout, didn't go with the ball. That guy, guy was pointing for the timeout, they threw the ball to him. And Hunter, there, yeah, he tried to set an outlet past the guy. All he had to do was hold the basketball in that scenario. The inbounds throw, looking for something. To the corner, Culver yeah. shot blocked by Key. And we have overtime for the national championship. Big stop on the defensive end. Key makes a clean block. We got overtime. All right. Buckle it up, boys. An opportunity where they kicked him for a three. Mooney. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> three around him. Looking for help. They'll take the shot instead. And <laughs> got the double bounce. They sort of left the ball a little bit. They really do. They've been able to get through the cracks, too. Show zone and get to that man. Hunter hit the shot at the end of regulation. Oh, just it does it again. They come back from three down to put up five unanswered to take a two pop lead inside two minutes. Culver puts it on the hip and Mamadi says, Get that out of here. And here's a little rant about instant replay for you. I hate this call right here. In any normal basketball situation, it's clearly the defender hitting the ball out of bounds, away from the person dribbling. If we are playing pickup right here, the ball is going to stay with Texas Tech. But we have to examine every little minute detail and angle. And we, after like the freaking third or fourth time looking at it in super slow motion, we finally realize that the ball hit the edge of his pinky finger so the ball is going to go the other way and listen i get that's the correct call because it touched the other player last but i think this should be texas tech's ball i don't know how you make a rule about this but i think this is so dumb the defensive player obviously just hits it away i this makes me so mad obviously if he hit it into like his whole hand or he hit into the offensive player's foot or leg or any like just big part of the body sure go the other way but the fact that it just barely just hits the little bit of the pinky is so stupid i liked it better in a time when this wouldn't have even been looked at when you were watching it in real time everyone was like oh yeah ball stays here and instead we wasted so much time just looking at this and i think if we hadn't examined the replay this closely no one had even known it hit his pinky this is so dumb And players going to that pitch. Look Up ahead, this. they've got Key. Say goodnight. And dunks it down. Eight points in front. Facing adversities over and over again and climbing the mountain. Eight seconds. Final seconds playing out. End of a fabulous tournament. Rebound into the hands of Hunter. And Virginia with the all-time turnaround title. What else could be number one but UNC and Villanova? Sure, the last game had overtime, but this game finished the way every kid dreams, a buzzer beater for the national championship. Villanova had been known as a team of chokers. It was the Jay Wright special for him to be in the CBS studio for the Sweet 16 because he always got knocked out in the first weekend but everything changed with this game. On the UNC side, you gotta feel for Bryce Johnson and Marcus Page. Page hit the greatest unimportant shot of all time and should get the respect he deserves for the onions on a double clutch three to tie the game, only to be canceled out by Chris Jones. Close the bridges, and it's a, it's the game at 46 to shoot. He's got Johnson on, gonna step back, put up the chopper for three. That's right now, he's feeling it right. 
Archie Diakono. Pretty. They do that so many trips. The lead is seven for the Wildcats. As Page tries to take it again and does. How about that little show and go? A little. I didn't see him. Archie Diakono. Has Carolina changed the momentum? They have. Nice cross. Outside. Big shot right here. Barry's three. Yes. Right back. This game, Brunson, two to shoot. Booth got it away, and it's his night. I'll set for some wide. Nice screen. Here's Page. Yes. Oh, wow. That's it. No double teaming trap. It is solid. But there's a double. There's a perfect trap. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Archie Diakono in the direction of Ochefu. Carolina's crawled back into it. A 10 3 stretch. Got it down low. Johnson makes it home. And it's down to one. I think you got a quick five for Johnson inside. Page goes ahead and takes it inside. And it somehow rolls out. Carolina fights for it and gets the putback. Boy, Hart had it. They couldn't lock the deal up. It's Barry, who had the hot hand from three in the first half. They're going to have to do something from the outside now. It's Page off balance. Puts it oh! with his inability to make threes. He kept his composure. This time, the little guy with some major onions to tie this thing up. Incredible. Got away from Ochefu, then had to adjust with Archie Diakono coming after him. How special is this kid? Great student, great kid to talk to. Leadership qualities, qualities above the norm, and lifted his team with a chance now with four to go. Villanova's got to get a quick push to get him up the floor. I would say, you, hey, look, at, look at the kid there. <laughs> Gonna go length of the court with Archie Diakono. Three seconds at midcourt. Jenkins gives it to Jenkins for the championship. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody. It's been so fun to recap the tournament with y'all. I've had a blast. And now I guess there's only one more thing to do. Since there wasn't a national champion of 2020, we're gonna crown them right here. This is what would have happened. Your 2020 national champions, the Syracuse Orange. The ball is tipped, and there you are. You're running for your life. You're a shooter. Stop. And all the years, no one knows just how hard you worked. But now it shows. In one shining moment, it's all on the line. In one shining moment, they're frozen in time. But time is short. The road is long In the blinking of an eye That moment's gone And when it's done Win or lose You always did your best Cause inside you knew That in one shining moment You reached deep inside One shining moment Feel the wind in your face It's more than a contest It's more than a Cause inside you knew In one shining moment You reached for the sky In one shining moment You knew In one shining moment You're willing to try In one 
Shout.